Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at toy, drug, and department stores. Good afternoon, Indianapolis Ultimate Frisbee fans, Atlanta Ultimate Frisbee fans, and all fans of the Premier Ultimate League. I'm Charlie Lowe with me, Rochelle Frash. We are excited to bring to you another phenomenal game of the Premier Ultimate League between the Indianapolis Red and the Atlanta Soul. Rochelle, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, Charlie? You know, we uh, started the day cloudy, thunderstorming. Yeah. Nice to wake up to the storm. Makes it hard to get out of bed, but, you know, the clouds are shining and should be a pretty good conditions, albeit a little hot. Yeah, it'll be nice to have a bit of a change of pace weather-wise for Indy Red. They've had some, some tough weather the last couple of games so far this season, so it'll be nice to have uh, a bit more pristine conditions for Ultimate today. Yeah, you're not making any jokes about that. Uh, for those of you who watched the Minnesota Strike Indianapolis Red game um, from a couple weeks ago, it truly was uh, ugly conditions, a stiff upwind, downwind, making it difficult for players to uh, attack in the ways that they're comfortable doing. And then it was just straight up cold in Washington, D.C. when they played that yeah. shadow game. That's the... the the, the benefit of having uh, games in April, right? Yeah, exactly. And as we see the Atlanta Soul uh, running out, getting ready to take the field. Nice of them to make the drive all the way up here so we could uh, get, um, get a game against them. I know that they're missing a few uh, names and faces today. Quincy Booth, one of the big young stars, not making uh, an appearance on the field today. But we were going to get uh, household name Aaron Schrader, which is... Uh, she's always a joy to watch play. Yeah, I don't. I think it's been a while since I've watched uh, Atlanta Soul play in person. I think it was many, many years ago, back when uh, they played uh, prior to Atlanta Hustle playing up at the Cats game a few years back. Mm, gotcha. And as we see the uh, Indianapolis Red making their uh, entry onto the field, uh, much larger roster. It's going to be nice to have the extra legs today. Um, the Indianapolis Red, though, still without um, a few notable names. Uh, no Tilo today up coaching Michigan Flywheel at College Regionals. Um, no Anastasia Foster not able to work uh, her work schedule enough to get up here from Houston. And no uh, 
Kristen Duds Dudley, um, not able to uh, make her way here this weekend. Yeah, provides a good opportunity for some some other players to, to get some time out there and um, work their spot on the team, I guess. No, exactly. I got a chance to talk with Jackie Lai earlier this week to see what sort of adaptations they had planned, you know, knowing that they were going to be missing some people. And Jackie's always cool as a cucumber, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, but, you know, she just said, cool, we're going to have other big players step up. Lauren Kitten's going to take Tilo's power throwing spot. Yeah. Going to have Katie Dyer Cox uh, bringing some youth to this team, yeah. we'll say. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, for sure. Ready to run some people into the ground. Uh, should be a. Great opportunity to explore the depth of this team. Yeah, it'll be fun to see uh, Katie Cox play out there today. This is her first game this season, um, so it'll be fun. And we are excited to tell you that this live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate, providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. And also by uh, the Discraft Ultra Star. The Discraft, Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. We'd like to take some time to recognize some of our other sponsors today. Somerset Paving out of Michigan. Somerset Paving is Detroit's expert in asphalt and concrete paving. Somerset Paving, take the right way to quality. We also want to thank um, MDMI Materials Data Management. Uh, they have the experience and drive necessary to help your organization deploy the best in engineering materials information management. Check us out on LinkedIn for current job openings and a website. Um, and on our website, materialsdatamanagement.com for a list of our services and software. Data's ex importers, exporters, and consulting to MDMI is here for you. Everyone's Joy Photography from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Everyone's Joy Photography, UND sports team photographer, and Indy Red's official photography company. Does not matter if you need sports or fashion, we got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. And lastly, we would like to shout out Breakmark for our fabulous jerseys we have this year. Breakmark is the official apparel sponsor of the Indy Red. Go to breakmark.com for official jerseys, replica, and team merchandise. Uh, you can also snag one of the uh, special pride jerseys this year. Uh, they're pretty sweet. I'd like to, like to grab one myself. Uh, Breakmark always getting the great work out there. They're also... Um, sponsoring jerseys for um, Columbus Pride in Nashville as well this year. And with that, we are ready to get things started as we see Indianapolis putting out a defensive line, Haney B Haley Bannis with the disc in her hand. What do you expect to see from the uh, red defense today, Rochelle? Um, so I think this is a good opportunity to kind of show off um, the defense that they have been working on uh, kind of in practice. And the last couple of games, it's, they've had to adapt on the fly with uh, defensive measures and zone looks because of the weather and the wind. And so I think this will uh, kind of be an opportunity for both teams to focus on person defense and kind of really test those matchups on the field. I uh, could not agree more. I know that we're going to see a little bit of the zone look that they like to throw out for us. As we get ready to start the game, we want to thank our observers, Brittany Ballard and Luke Thomas, for uh, giving their time today to make sure that we have a well-supported and uh, where necessary officiated game. And Haley Bannis is throwing the opening pull. Fantastic distance on that pull as we see them center to number 10, Maya Griner. And we are in motion, the sole quick moving the disc up and down the field looking for those uh, big cross field throws. Huge inside break over to Maya Greiner. Pick on the field. Light stoppage due to a pick bet uh, involving number 37 and number 42 for the Indianapolis Red as Kelly Kirker makes up the ground to her player. And we're gonna get back in. So right now we're seeing a lot of person defense from the Indianapolis Red. Uh, taking a break thanks to the Good conditions likely from their 3-3-1 zone that they like to run. Almost pressure and able, Haley Bannis able to inc uh, increase the pressure over there. Gets the block, picks up, and Red are attacking the other way, Rochelle. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a nice uh, block there from Haley Bannis. Uh, she's in the right space, right time, and was able to, to capitalize on that. We'll see if uh, Indy Red can convert on this one for the first point of the game. Anna McClurkin over to Annie Mylink. Annie Mylink filling in today for Maketa Matamore, uh, who is combating an illness. Annie Mylink bringing some sharp around throws to this red team. As we see Haley Bannis hit Kelly Kirker at that front cone for an easy 1-0 break for the Indianapolis Red. There's some nice movement we see from Red there, kind of a perfect opportunity to get set up and uh, work their system in order to get that in and get this first goal of the game, and we're off. Something I'm seeing already that I really like today, Rochelle, is the uh, continued, uh, as we get a replay on this uh, goal from the Indianapolis Red. Nice OI flick over to Kelly Kerker. Comes up hopping a little bit, maybe just stopped a bit short, but Kelly Kerker is just as fast to that front cone as anybody in the league. Yeah, it's nice to see Kelly back out there. Um, she had her first game with Red last week. She's coming off of a uh, hand injury. Um, Kelly's a great, great member of our community here in Indianapolis, and it's uh, great to have her back on the field. Um, she's great, great advice on the sideline, but it's even, even more fun to be out there playing with her. So good to see her back and getting her first goal. Oh, exactly. Something that I'm seeing today that I really like. Excited to see the play of Linnea Frazier, number 20 for the Red. Uh, has always been a very, very fast player, but has added a huge throwing element to her game this season. Someone for us to watch today. Yeah. As the Soul begin attacking the other direction from the middle of the field, taking their time throwing easy swing passes. Nice and high, and she is not able to tow the line, and the turnover is going to go the, the way of the Indianapolis Red, picking up on that far sideline. Number 15, Anna McClurkin going to pick up. Good lane pressure from the Atlanta Soul, looking to seal up some of those inside lanes that the Red were enjoying on the last point. That's how you make easy adjustments to get yourself going. Yeah, definitely. Not able to stall. Not able to hold those lanes as Bree Burris uh, and uh, Haley Bannis are attacking inside. Huge huck. Linnea Fraser chases it down. That's a goal. She's on the scoreboard. Linnea Fraser, assisted by Haley Bannis. That's a nice goal there from Linnea Fraser. She had plenty of space and ran right onto it and, and converted. And that puts uh, Andy Red up to zero uh, here in the first quarter. Haley Bannis filling up the stat sheet early. Gorgeous hug to Linnea Fraser, able to slow down and run it down. No one in her vicinity. She's able to secure the disc there. Down in early 0-2. Time to start wondering what sort of adjustments are we going to see from the sole offense. Um, the throwing lanes are there. The swinging opportunities are opening up spaces that they want to see, but throws just not quite coming down the way that they're looking for, especially on that turnover on the last possession. Yeah, there's definitely always some pressure and nerves in the, th the first quarter of the game, so kind of uh, as we continue here, it'll be interesting to see how Seoul works to uh, change their matchups and figure out how to um, shut down um, Indy. Looking steadily out there, Sydney Olin with the disc in her hand waiting for the other team to signal as we get the pull-up for our third point of this game. Nice lofty pull, easily clearing the halfway mark, getting to about the two-thirds mark of the field, lands out of bounds, though, which is going to give the Soul an opportunity to start from that break mark in the middle of the field. We're seeing the red <coughs> set up defensively, uh, almost sort of a bracket. We've got two players, Skills Milton and um, Eliza Hutchings, taking very, very, very steep inside lanes and waiting for uh, either in cuts that they can pick up as Katie Dyer and um, Melissa Gibbs are picking up the players sorting deep. Nice pressure there from Gibbs. Throw goes up to the sole. Huge bid, not able to bring it in. Disc lands just underneath her hands and the Indianapolis Red are gonna have another opportunity to attack the other way about five yards outside of the goal line. Number eight, Alex Hu picking up for Indianapolis. And the throw just sails past Hutchings, an unfortunate turnover. The Soul, now with fantastic field position, looking to attack for their first goal of the game. Big, deep cut. Gets position and brings it in. That's Erin Schrader. We knew that she was going to start filling it up. It was just a matter of when, Rochelle. 
Yes, that's a, a good goal for Ileana Soul there, able to capitalize quickly and uh, shift their positioning after that quick turn after um, red. And so we'll take a look at it again here. So we see there number 18, Naomi, Naomi Anderson, just waits patiently for Schrader to make that most fun of cuts, I think, that attacking deep space from the handler motion. And she just skates past three to Indianapolis Red defenders for the goal. A little bit long on that throw, but you can tell that they're dialing them in. Um, as they keep calibrating, this game's going to get closer, I think. Yeah, I think there's so much that goes into uh, the first part of the game and calibration of throws, especially uh, being outdoors and um, whether it's windy, not windy, and figuring that out. And so um, it's nice that we're able to see them kind of get those calibrated early and start making conversions, and um, it's good to see. We're going to get our first look now at the O-line for the Indianapolis Red. Um, some names you may have heard before on this O-line. Uh, we see Sydney Oland out there. We see Risa Umeno out there. Lauren Kitten uh, making uh, her debut this season for the Indianapolis Red at that center handler spot as she gets the disc. Huge throw immediately up to Gibbs. Not a person in sight. Not quite enough. Gibbs puts it up. And that is a four-throw score. Hernandez. Maya Hernandez getting the uh, easy dish from Melissa Gibbs for another Indianapolis Red Bull. Yeah, that was a nice, impressive showing for uh, Lauren Kitten as she started here. Uh, we can look back. Um, she is known for these beautiful throws that you can see here. Um, so nice to see her be able to take that opportunity early and um, get in that goal for Red. And talk about it. Premier Ultimate League debut. First point at the professional level, you get centered to in the middle of the field and you rip a huck for an easy throw after for a goal. You, really, the only thing I think Lauren has to complain about is that she didn't put in the end zone herself. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's nice to, to be able to have that confidence. I know sometimes when you're coming in as a professional athlete debut, there's always a little bit of nerves. But anything I know about Lauren is she's always been a very confident player, and she knows the, the right and open look when she sees it. So she takes it, and she was able to capitalize there. Look for her to coach, uh, to captain Indianapolis Bandwagon this summer, coming to a local club uh, tournament near you. Haley Bannis sails the pole out of bounds, once again giving Atlanta Soul an opportunity to start from the brick mark in the middle of the field. We're seeing lots of the poles end up almost in that exact spot. We're seeing at the IU Health logo, so it's a uh, nice uh, consistency there. Nice high break. With a block from Kelly Kirker, we saw Aaron Schrader think about potentially a call for a moment, but no impact on the play is a turnover in favor of the red. Downfield, Emily Wyckoff chewing up huge yards, but the wall pressure from the Atlanta Soul frustrating the red backfield for just a moment. Attacking inside, Linnea Frazier gains massive yards on that in cut from Haley Bannis. Puts it up nice and high over to Emily Schloniger. Break throw, just outside of Kelly Kerger. Not able to uh, secure and toe the line there. Soul are gonna be attacking from their goal line. Yeah, a similar spot as to where we've seen Kelly grab that goal earlier in the game. Um, seems like a hot spot so far. And I remember last game I commentated, I said that was the hot spot. And eventually we saw that to be even more true. Big throw goes up downfield. That's number three, uh, Dana Badeau all alone. Good rotation there from the Indianapolis Red. Emily Wyckoff hunting down the deep cutting Atlanta Soul player. We see Annie Myling creating good pressure for the red. Discs one to the middle of the field. Sails over the Atlanta Soul. Huge grab. Goodness gracious. Um, Natalie Wilson, Willie as they call her, brings it down. A couple more throws later, and we are back in the end zone for the Atlanta Soul. This Natalie game is Wilson immediately competitive. To Naomi Anderson. Yeah, it's exciting to see, uh, see a competitive game initially uh, today, especially with um, this weather clearing out. So there's that huge grab from Willie. Takes her time with the disc. Easy upfield throw to Naomi Anderson. And Cut. the uh, solar back on the board. Yeah, a couple of red defenders in the area there, but um, she was able to, to read it, come down with it, and uh, get that goal for her soul. You got to think that the red, you know, in the lead though they are, it's only a one-point lead, and 
every point matters as we as they look to uh, continue pushing on this food on this uh, first quarter. There is a little bit of wind out there um, as we see the flag billowing, not quite stiff up and down, but definitely a thrower's win. Your ability to control the throw and get some good spin on it is going to play to your advantage today, and we'll definitely see some of the stronger throwers for these teams separate themselves. Yeah, and that's what's a great part about most of the Indy Red players playing from the Midwest. We're kind of used and in, used to and ingrained in playing in kind of rash and harsh, harsh conditions, so we definitely learn that as players to throw in the wind and throw in the elements, and uh, it definitely helps in gameplay. Lauren Kitten over to Alex Hu, up to Skittles Milton. Finds an inside lane, explores over to Elijah Hut Eliza Hutchings, up to Katie Dyer, back to Alex Hu in the middle of the field. One of the things I like about this red team is their dedication to keeping the disc in the middle, which means that they can attack from as many angles as they would like to. Over to Katie Dyer Cox. Takes her time, doesn't like the look. On skates, but a foul on the throw from Dyer. Oh. Alex Hu not going to secure the disc. Little extra contact there. Just some extracurriculars. Yes. It's na natural with the sport. It, it happens, but I've ever, every once in a while, it's a, it turns into a foul. For a non-contact sport, there's an awful lot of contact yeah, that sometimes. that is for sure. Risa Umeno sails through the air, not able to get her hand all the way on the disc, and the Solar are going to have an opportunity for a break to even things up. Eliza Hutchings setting the mark on number 13, Emma Jones. Stall count starting to rise. Pressure's going to increase. Able to find the outlets she's looking for. We're seeing these cuts come early and often from the soul as that disc sails high in the air. Risu Umeno in the area, able to get under it. Grabbed by the Atlanta Soul, they bring it down. Big swing over. Eliza Hutchings is able to flare out and seal off that throw, applying some pressure to Emma Jones. Disc is high. What an incredible grab from the Atlanta Soul player. Brings it down, towing comfortably inside the end zone. This game is evened up at threes. Yeah, that was a nice grab there. Definitely got up into the air to secure that. Um, always a, a timing factor there to, to get up and grab that. We'll see the replay here. Emma Jones taking her time, evaluating her options. Big around, disc sails a little bit, comfortably brought down by the Atlanta Soul. That's number 27, Therese Dobler, securing her first goal of the game. There's a nice conversion opportunity there, um, break for Atlanta Soul, um, an opportunity to see uh, Indy Red's O-line play some defense. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they adapt um, and change that here. Um, as future breaks potentially happen or not happen. So we're seeing a slightly different look uh, on the O-line come out for Indy Red. Emily Wyckoff, Linnea Fraser out there. Kristen Bolte Baxter out there. In the middle of the field, discus with Anna McClurkin over to Haley Bannis. Finds the inside lane over to Kelly Kirker. Back to Annie Mylink. Doesn't like the swing to Bannis. Takes her time, finds a Bolte. No one in the area, no mark on her right now. Inside to Kelly Kirker, screams through two sole, de through two sole defenders. Anna McClurkin over to Annie Mylink. Evaluates some options. Big fake back to Haley Bannis on the far side of the field. And we're seeing the sole shift into more of a wall, letting content to let the red players explore some of these big swings rather than letting off the upfield throws. Call on the Pick field. Call. Pick called. So we wait for the players to establish who should be going where and when. Looks like we're going to get restarted. Linnea Fraser in the disc. Doesn't like the inside look up to Bolte. Another pit call. You see them throwing up the whiff diff sign for the pick. Two arms with fists up. So as this game gets competitive, it's very common for more calls to uh, absolutely reflect the escalation of uh, play. High release. Too far for Emily Wyckoff. The Soul are going to get another chance to go for a break, one that can put them up 4-3. Let's see how our red respond. 
Yeah, so another opportunity here for uh, Seoul for a break chance, but. And it does not matter. Quickly hand blocked by Kelly Kirker. There is not a person in Indianapolis who has not been on the receiving end of a Kelly Kirker hand it's block. Uh, everyone has it. It's a rite of passage to be uh, hand blocked by, by Kelly. So. Lenea Fraser tries that inside lane again, and it works out. Kelly Kirker secures the book ends. Huge hand block to easy soaring goal in the red to keep their lead for three. Kelly Kirker's second goal of the day. Um, nice third, second? Uh, second goal of the second day, Second goal of the day, all right. Uh, yeah, she's, she's always one to build quite the stat line, so no surprise here on that. And excited to see uh, how many goal she can clock in this game and this season in general. So it takes her time, gets that right arm over. You see that she wins it with her feet, able to get over into position, and I think that you could feel that throw up from up here, oh, yes. that block from yep. up here. So we see the swing over to Linnea Fraser again, taking her time, finds the inside lane, puts it up easily for Kelly Crocker to bring down. Yeah, those hand blocks are never quite the most comfortable thing, but there's something that's just so satisfying about them that it usually doesn't matter how much your hand hurts because you got one. So Atlanta Soul with another O point. Looking to attack from right to left. 31 Maria Vargas back over to number 13 Emma Jones. And we see this 3-1 zone come out. Bree Burris playing that aggressive off-handler defense, really forcing them into tighter and tighter spaces. Short handler movement as we cross the two-minute mark in this first quarter. Big fake from the Soul, trying to open up some space. Red able to soar back into position. Big break around over to Danny Cordez. Doesn't like that look. And unfortunately, very, very, very far out of bounds for the Atlanta Soul, wishing they could enjoy a little bit more field space. And that's a turnover for the Red. We're going to get another break opportunity here, a chance to push their lead back to two. Anna McClurkin over to Haley Bannis. Takes her time inside lane. Tight window to Bree Burris, but Bree handout stretch able to secure that disc. Big fake. Fix our camera out from Emily Warewine. We're up to Bree Burris. Takes her time and evaluates the options. Werwine tight up the lane, able to use her body and get in position. Big throw over to Haley Bannis. And that is clockwork. Oh, sorry, that is not Haley Bannis securing that Indy disc. Score from Indy Red. Jalen Baumgartner, Indy Spectre's own. Yes. Another new mixed team out of Indianapolis. So this is dedication and sticking with your receiver, Emily Werewine. Claws for every little inch of space upfield. Almost a hand on that disc from the sole player, but finds Jalen Baumgartner comfortably in the middle of the field for that goal. Yeah, that was an easy, calm, smooth grab there from Jalen. Uh, she knew where she was supposed to be and was ready for that opportunity, and uh, Emily saw it and was able to, to make that happen. So... As we are inside the two mark, two minute mark, looking for the time to tick down, we want to take a moment to remember that um, at the end of each quarter, that is not the fourth, possession plays out as normal. We still enjoy stoppages for each team, but uh, as time would expire in this quarter, the team with possession of the disc, as the clock crosses zero, has the opportunity to play out the rest of their possession. Play ends if there is a turnover or a goal. So there is a lot of pressure on the red to try to generate a turnover prior to uh, prior to time ticking down. The soul just need to be in possession of the disc when the clock strikes zero. Oops, and our sub, sub one minute here. We're starting to see a little more crossover between these O and D lines. Frisbee is malleable that way, as we saw Lauren Kitten previously on the O line launch the pull. And this is why they want her out there, a chance to attack the other direction, forcing an errant throw. Strong O line, a strong line able to uh, convert a break opportunity perhaps. 30 seconds left. We're up to Alex Hu. Huge rip. Katie Dyer Cox stops, reads, evaluates. And what a layout from the Atlanta Soul defender. 
preventing the red from completing that play. And so they're going to have a chance to attack the other way. Again, they just need to be in possession of this disc. Yeah, so now as time ticks down here, as long as they maintain possession, they can work it up the field. Uh, what an incredible grab. Remembering here that as play ends, the Atlanta Soul are going to start with the disc to begin the next quarter. Some conversation about when time expired going on on the field. Sounds like we're trying to decide here whether or not Indy Red has an opportunity um, to get possession in this last. And it looks like they do. Lauren Kitten on the disc. Streaking Alex, who doesn't like that look. Finds Maya Hernandez in the middle of the field. And the Red don't need to force anything here. They just need to play easy offense. That can feel like the most impossible thing in the world at times, but possession is what wins games and wins championships. Katie Dyer-Cox, they're just too far for her, and that will signify the end of our first quarter. Yeah, there's always, sometimes uh, some of these uh, end of quarter points always that end super excitingly, quarter. and Red some five, of them kind of just uh, fizzle out a little bit like this, but uh, regardless, Indy Red is up 5-3 to three You'd like to take this end moment? of the, the of first sponsors? quarter. We are going to take a quick break here uh, in the action, about two minutes or so between quarters. And what did you like out of that first quarter, Rochelle? Uh, I think it was just, it was a great opportunity to just see some smooth offense from each team, um, really adjusting to the weather here and uh, kind of get, just getting to show off what they've been working on all season, sands, weather elements and conditions. Could not agree more. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, Charlie Lowe for Rochelle Frash. We'll be right back. back Charlie Lowe and Rochelle Frash on the broadcast for the Indianapolis Red Atlanta Soul matchup for the Premier Ultimate League reminding you that this broadcast is brought to you by Spin Ultimate Spin Ultimate providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007 visit spin on the web at spinultimate.com So as we see the pull go up Rochelle Indianapolis Red receiving and the pull sales pass them Maybe thought it was going to sit down a little bit earlier. Field position just a little bit worse for the Red than they were looking for. Sydney Olin starts the attack over to Alex Hu. 
Doesn't like the look to Eliza Hutchings. Takes the swing to Risa Umena who secures it. Big fake. And uh, the Solar looking to do a little bit more trapping on sides of the field, content to let those swings go off as long as you know they're staying towards the middle. As soon as it gets to a sideline, they are clamping down hard as Katie Dyer-Cox finds Eliza Hutchings in the middle of the field. Throw sails low, but nothing too low for Gibbs. Huge huck, Katie Dyer. Redemption as she plucks the apple from the tree over the encroaching sole defender. And that is a huge goal for the Indianapolis Red. What a way to start the quarter. Yeah, that's a great start to, to start start to the quarter for Indy Red here to um, see Gibbs get that nice look out to Katie Dyer Cox. And truly, Gibbs scoops that disc out from nowhere, takes her time, loads it up, sails just a little bit. And Katie showing off the athleticism. She's near to a six-sport athlete. A uh, recent interest in pickleball, uh, she told us earlier today, developing. Um, plucks that disc from over the from over the defender. Yeah, it's nice to to have uh, Gibbs back with Indy Red. She was part of the uh, founding. Uh, players of Indy Red some years ago and kind of has, has bounced around and got some opportunities to play with a lot of different teams, but it's great to have her uh, back with us this season. So 6-3 to the Indy Red. As we see the defense pause for just a moment, some confusion with the observer perhaps. So we'll have plenty of opportunity to set themselves up in the middle of the field. As we see this, 3-3-1 three, three, zone back from the red. Haley Bannis taking that center of that uh, tip of the arrow, as they like to say. But Seoul making quick work of it, marching up the field over to number five, Lily Ponitz. Disc moving for the Seoul. And a non-contested foul call from uh, Mary Timmons, uh, number 21, Sam Lee, starting from the middle of the field. Not too far out. We might get a good look at an end zone set here from the uh, Atlanta Soul. Quick up line. Doesn't like the continue. Over to the middle of the field. And cool and collected. The Soul punch right back, bringing our score to 6-4. Yeah, a bit of a shuffle there defensively for Indy Red. Uh, Atlanta Soul was able to Three snag that one Atlanta in. Soul. Yeah, so we see Sam Lee push the disc up the field to Danny Ortiz, who takes her time and right in the middle of the field is able to find Therese Dobler. And uh, they are right back on the board. Still down two, score in favor of the Indy Red. And if you're enjoying our live stream today, we hope that you take some time to donate. Of course, this broadcast brought to you free, brought to you free courtesy of our sponsors. However, the Indy Red do not get practice facilities, do not get field space, do not get those phenomenal jerseys without your help and your support. Please consider scanning the QR code with your phone and whether you can give $1, whether you can give 5 10 100 every little bit helps continue bringing you high quality ultimate uh, from the Indian Red here in the Premier Ultimate League. Yeah, and Red has always done a great job of supporting their community as well, um, being advocates for the causes that they care about um, and being generous with their donations that they receive from the community um, in order to give back to the community as well. So um, definitely good interest at heart there. Pull goes up. Risa Umeno picks up on the far side of the field. Centers to Lauren Kitten. We see a similar 3-3-1 zone from the ATL Soul. Sydney Olin swings to the far side. Risa right back up to Eliza Hutchings, playing a little bit of give and go. Risa cooking as she moves up the field. Lauren, huge huck. Rips it downfield to Emily Schloniger. Unfortunately, disc sails a little bit too low, and Nat Willie Wilson secures a block for the Soul just past the fingertips of Emily Schloniger and this will are going to pick up on the goal line. Yeah, it's always a always a risk there um, when there's that type of um, zone being run, the uh, factor of the monster, as they say, in the back kind of working that. As we see, high stall count, and no one goes for that disc. Right back to the Indy Red, Eliza Hutchings over to Lauren Kitten. The red are right back. Another shot from Lauren getting over to Maya Hernandez. Just got a shout out from her mom and reels the goal in. 
That's the kind of motivation we like to see. Yeah, it sounds like we need some need some more uh, need some more moms and fans out there to get some uh, live stream support. Um, we have a opportunity going here today where fans at the game can do a shout out to one of their players. Um, and Maya just got one, so give her a little bit of a boost there to secure that goal for Indy Red. Lauren Kitten enjoys what is widely agreed to be the greatest advantage possible in Ultimate Frisbee, which is that she does throw left-handed, and she has more power behind her throws than just about anybody else on this team. It means that those shots are going up regardless. Uh, I got the opportunity to coach Lauren last year on Indianapolis Bandwagon, and let me tell you, there is nothing more beautiful than seeing her uncork a full field flick huck or backhand to a streaking receiver. Maybe we'll get to see one of those today. This weather is being uh, pretty favorable, so I'm, I'm hoping to see a little more uh, risky looks as we go here throughout the game. Wind is starting to pick up a little bit. We're seeing some of these pulls, especially that start lower, get lifted up, enjoying a little more loft than perhaps the uh, pullers are looking to put on the discs. We see tight lane pressure from the Indianapolis Red. Anna McClurkin really actively marking the Atlanta Soul player. Able to continue pushing upfield though. Kelly Kirker on the mark now, hunting for another hand block. And that's over to number 12, Emma Jasky. Big fakes, tight handler pressure. Linnea Fraser almost gets her hand on that, but Emma Jones comes down with the disc. High floating disc, Haley Vanis just has to stay in the way of it, making sure that no one else brings it down and the red are attacking the other direction. Swing over to Anna McClurkin. Values the options, doesn't like anything. Swings over to Annie Mylink. We're seeing a lot of pressure on the uh, middle of the field undercuts of the Indianapolis Red, not getting a lot of the looks that they want, content to swing the disc around until something opens up. You have to credit the sole players as we have a stoppage on the field for those pressure on those undercuts. Yeah, it starts to see the uh, points like this where there's quite a few turns, especially in um, mashup of person and zone defense. A lot of um, exhaustion and fatigue starts to set in, especially as the sun is starting to come out here. So different elements at play, um, but it'll be interesting to see who uh, is able to convert on this point. Play restarts. Annie Miling taking her time evaluating some options. Huge pressure there from Lily Ponitz on the sole. Anna McClurkin keeps the disc. Haley Bannis not quite finding what she's looking for. We're seeing some flood cuts from the Indianapolis Red, looking to send more than one player into the middle of the field, trying to increase the amount of options and force wow. the soul to adapt as we get a timeout on the field. So a much needed timeout here for these players. Um, so timeouts, there are two timeouts allowed per half and max 70 seconds per timeout. Um, and this is an opportunity for uh, the teams to kind of reset here, um, get their mental um, headspace back in line after a point that has had uh, several turns and gone on for several minutes. Um, so it'll be a good opportunity to see uh, what the team set up here and what they do with this opportunity. And one of the other notable things about timeouts at the professional level, coaches have the opportunity to sub in any number of players, whether that's one, whether that's seven. It's normally a very great opportunity to, if you're a D-line and you've forced a block uh, or a turnover, a good chance for coaches to plug in some offensive-minded players and really capitalize on that break opportunity. Uh, that is pretty common across all of the professional leagues. Uh, the AUDL were the progenitors of that, quickly adopted by the PUL and WUL. Yeah, it's a nice opportunity there to maximize um, on a turn. Lauren Kitten uncorks her third huck of the game. A little bit of sharing is carrying. Big throw goes up. And Eliza Hutchings not able to get her toe down. Unfortunate turnover from the red disc sail just a bit too far, and I think that's what I meant when we're starting. That's what I said earlier. That wind is starting to play a factor as discs sit just a little bit more. Yeah, it was some nice, nice movement there from red, but unfortunate uh, went a little bit too far for them. Inside break throw for the 
Soul, as they quickly push the other direction, these throws sitting low to avoid that wind. Lauren Kitten, big trap mark. Huge handler pressure. Katie Dyer Cox shutting down her player, but a big break throw to the far side of the field. And a stoppage. Potential stall on the mark. Timeout signaled on the field. Disc going back. The so Soul again, were able to get a timeout call. Second timeout within this point. I'm not sure what the – didn't watch the clock here, but timeout. we're going on a, what, a three, four, four-minute point. Yes. Um, so hopefully for something here soon. And we're going to see some of the same D players go right back out for the Indy Reds, some of the same O-line Soul players go right back out. So though the point is long – no one's played the entirety of that point, so relatively fresh legs uh, yeah. for each team as they look to uh, get what is starting to feel like a very decisive point. Carmi's curious. I wonder if anyone's ever got on some type of record of a, of a singular point to be able to have played every player on the team. I, would, I mean, get three full lines out there, you're, you're getting up there, but that would be a, that'd be a fun fact to investigate. Maybe not ideal, but it would be some fun. Roster size is capped at 20 uh, in the Premier Ultimate League. It is not an impossibility that we see all 20 players cycle through. A little unlikely, perhaps. Yeah. We're getting, getting closer here, but had a timeout from both teams, so we'll see if they e use or risk another one. Disc is in the middle of the field. So we'll push it up to Naomi Anderson. Enjoys the inside lane up to Emma Jones. Back to Naomi Anderson, doesn't like the upline continue. Anna McClurkin able to get a hand on that disc around Aaron Schrader, and that's a turnover for the red. Bree Burris rocketing downfield. McClurkin does not like the look. Swings over to Haley Bannis, and the red are attacking from the center of the field again. Pick called. Yeah, Brianna Burris was taking that opportunity to kind of go for um, that downfield option. Just wasn't there, but she's, she's a a quick one out there and usually uh, is able to capitalize on those when the opportunity is given. We're seeing a lot of fronting of the downfield cutters from the Atlanta Soul, again, hoping to force either deep throws that they can run onto, letting their athletic players go and make plays, or forcing the red to swing the disc as they push upfield to Annie Milan, who uncorks. Going downfield to number 33, Jalen Baumgartner. Doesn't like the initial look. Swings to Haley Bannis. And the red start to shift into their end zone set. Inside look over to Annie Miley. One more throw to Jalen Baumgartner. Despite the huge bid from Aaron Schrader, the red punch in that goal. That is some nice movement there from Jalen Baumgartner. We'll see back on this replay here. This was Haley Manis taking her time. Nice little IO flick up to my link who continues the rest of the way to the Von Gardner. I do have to shout out Aaron Trader for that huge bid. There's not a ton of players who can make that play. She's one of the few in the league who had a real opportunity to make something happen on that defensive bid. Yeah, this is a bittersweet end to the point uh, for Atlanta Soul. After a couple of turns and opportunities there, Andy Red was able to capitalize and uh, walk it in and score at 8-2-4. It's about 5-22 left in the second quarter. And remember that despite the length of that point, that was in fact just a singular break for the Indy Red. Um, felt like the change of possessions. We saw O's and we saw D's switch <laughs> back and forth. All for that just to be a pretty routine break. Just a, just a normal, another another day in the break zone. Excited to see lots of fans out here today um, on both sides of the stadium enjoying this beautiful weather after a weird week of typical Midwestern May. So nice to be out here and enjoying this game and enjoying company of friends and family. Haley Bannis sails the pull down the field, keeps it in bounds this time, but quick work by the Atlanta Soul to chew up around 30 yards as they push farther down the field. Bolte Baxter closes the distance, but the hop from the ATL Soul Secures the goal. 
And that might have been our first or second fastest point of this game. Yeah, it's a the juxtaposition of the previous point to this point here. We um, see almost the entire point in the replay. So it's just the name of the game. Some points are long and some points are just nice and quick and beautiful like that. As Natalie Wilson uncorks the nice huck, her receiver able to take her time, line up that hop, and secure that goal. 8-5, still in favor of the Indianapolis Red. Yeah, again, that was a, let's see, 20 sub, 20 second point. Uh, nice movement there from Atlanta Soul. Had a great opportunity to see their offense in smooth motion. So, Indy Red have gone on a little bit of a break train, finally, finally getting an opportunity to throw the O-line back out. Uh, as we see Gibbs out there, Katie Cox out there, Alex Hu, Sydney Olin. Um, kind of, this is one of the first games this season that the Red have really had opportunities to rest their O-line, and I think that it's paying dividends. They've been pretty consistent today. Yeah, absolutely. It's been uh, nice to see kind of the balance of players out there for Indy Red. Not quite the distance on that huck for Lauren Kitten. As at number 31, Maria Vargas secures the block. Inside look up to number 22, Danny Cordez is bobbled and dropped as Sydney Olin picks up and starts the red counterattack into Katie Dyer Cox in the center of the field. Pushes up to Skittles Milton. Throw is low, right, landing right at the feet of Maya Hernandez. Looks like there was a call on the field. Foul call? Foul called by Skittles Milton on the throw. She's going to maintain possession, and the Red are going to continue this counter. Number 13, Emma Jones on the mark there. Lauren Kitten. Easy up to... Number eight, Alex Hu. A nice little backfield goal for the Indy Red after a couple turnovers for both teams, and the Red secure the hold. Yeah, Not as quite a, as clean as they might want to know. There's a nice, yet another assist from Warren Kitten. We'll see that again here. Easy dish right into the end zone. Almost looked like Alex Hu was straddling the line. Perhaps a little bit of favorite, you know, a favorable call for the red there. It looks like she was just bringing that far foot in. Yeah, keep keep second looking. That pylon out there is knocked over on the side. It gives a good optical illusion as to wh which is the line, which isn't the line. It's, it's it's a lot to keep track of, especially on a football field shrank down into a ultimate field. I love playing. I love coaching. I love commentating. The number one thing that I am thankful for every day is I do not observe games. Making those calls <laughs> is tough. Yeah, it is definitely a tough role to play. I mean, there's definitely benefit to Ultimate being somewhat self-officiated, but that is um, a lot, and we're very thankful for our observers, Brittany Ballard and Luke Thomas, out there today doing, doing the job that many of us would not want to do, but they are doing it willingly and fabulously. So uh, we're very thankful for them out there today. Another red pole soars, at, soars out of bounds. Disc is in the middle of the field as the soul look to start at another O point. I'm starting to wonder if some of these out of bounds poles are maybe on purpose for the red. It gives them a lot more time to set into their defense. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of strategy that goes into the pole for sure. What a rip from the Atlanta soul. In pursuit, sails just too far for number six, Natalie Willie Wilson. Got to love that look, though. It sat. She had plenty of time to sit there and deliver. They're just a little bit too far as the red begin from their goal line. Looking for another break opportunity. Try to push this lead to five. That's the second, the second throw a little bit too long out the back of that end zone. We're definitely seeing the wind at play here. Um, we'll see. One of these days that I imagine it will capitalize. Mary Timmons with the beautiful one-handed grab. Turnaround rips it downfield just too far for Haley Manis and Linnea Fraser. Disc sails sort of between the two of them. And we're going to get a counterattack from the soul as they look to try to complete their hold. Big wide mark from Haley Banis Frustrates the thrower. Inside upfield to Lily Ponitz. Aaron Trader churning for yards in the backfield. Another big flick hook goes up. This one sits nicely. 
player bobbles it, but she is able to catch it on her own second attempt. Trying to steal the assist from Aaron Trader as the soul secure the goal. And we have 9-6 to the Indy Red. And that's what they always say, that it is important to follow the disc and continue it until the disc is on the ground, um, even if you're going for the bobble. or It's not over till it's over. So the best throwers are able to quickly calibrate to the wind, and when they make throwing errors, the, make the adjustments necessary to uh, deliver the disc better on the next opportunity, as we see Aaron Trader do that to Christina Tuna Marciano, who reels in the goal, bringing again the score to 9-6 in favor of the Indianapolis Red. Definitely starting to see an energy boost out there. Um, we got some music going and lots of fans out here. So as we get into this game, there's definitely a little bit of the nerves are gone and more excitement um, as we go here and keeping the game close. And we'll see what happens. We maybe cursed ourselves at the beginning of this game. We were hoping for a smoother wind, maybe just more of a thrower's wind, but we found ourselves in an upwind down upwind downwind game. The team's enjoying that left to right motion on the screen, really beginning to take it, uh, take advantage of the opportunities presented by the wind pushing the disc to that right-hand side. As a pick is called, the player's throwing up the whiff diff recognized pick sign. We hear a crumble call, signifying a shift in defense from the Atlanta Soul. Bobbled by Alex Hu, disc is dropped in the sole with a phenomenal opportunity as we see Alex Hu initiate the pre-stall count. Pre-stalling in the PUL is a 10 second pre-stall when started on field by the players, 20 seconds when off field counted by the observers. Olin doesn't like the look. Finds Hutchings in the middle, over to Risa Umeno. Swings back to Olin. And as we cross under the two-minute mark, disc sailing out of bounds for Isu Umeno just does not get the OI edge that she was looking for on that throw. The Red are going to need to begin churning yards forward on these swings. The Soul are really clamping down and forcing a lot of side-to-side -side motion, but they are allowing lanes to push up field. The Red are going to need to begin capitalizing on those opportunities. Disc is dropped by number two, Danny Cordez. Olin doesn't like the huck. Doesn't like the second huck. Good stop by the Atlanta Soul players. Over to Risa. Doesn't like that first look. Finds Alex Hu. Looks off Eliza Hutchings. Hits Katie Dyer in the middle of the field. Back to Risa. Just too far for Sydney Olin. Again, this lane pressure from the Atlanta Soul really forcing uncomfortable throws for our red as we cross under the minute mark. Yeah, it definitely happens when points continue longer. There's more fatigue and throws are maybe not as smooth or as calm and focused, especially um, with a lot of that movement in the lanes. Lily Ponitz over to Lindsay Allman. Tough mark from Alex Hu. Throws the disc straight up in the air. We had a timeout called despite the secured goal from the Atlanta Soul. And because the timeout call was recognized by the observers, it is going to take precedence. So the Soul may be getting in their own way just a little bit. They want a better look at the end zone. However, you might, I think you got to kind of kick yourself there. Like, yeah, you know, just a little more patience and you get the thing you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, especially on a point where there's there's quite a few turns. Sometimes there's there's a benefit to doing that. But um, the coach obviously here didn't see necessarily what he was looking for um, and opted to uh, go for the timeout. And, I mean, the, the, th the throw was seemingly at a high stall and kind of just put up into the air for a grab um, at kind of at the last second. And they were able, were able to grab it, but... Um, I imagine they'll get something set up here and um, hopefully for them secure that goal again. Remembering our timeout rules, while it is a chance for them to put in the O-line and really try to secure this whole, you know, secure this break opportunity, the red get to put out a defensive line, you know, looking to counter. Um, additionally, depending on how this is secured, if it is in fact a hold for the soul, the red O-line has, you've given them a little bit of an extra break, you know, opportunity to march right back downfield. They're not going to be coming out tired from back-to-back -back points. Yeah, but definitely a, a pivot 
for them as well. Um, you can kind of go either way out of a timeout, if one, especially if one team subs and one team doesn't, and a uh, different advantage, but strategic either way what happens. Haley Bannett's on, Haley Bannett's on the mark. Discus swung over. And they are able to find number 18, oh, Naomi, Anderson, Naomi Anderson, after some quick give and go. Nice movement there from the soul, able to be patient there and uh, get that back in for them. And they won that one with the three or four players at the front of the stack as they got started. Just some short handler movement, easy throw windows as the red players overcommit to one side. Just easy dishes leading them to the goal there. Yep, so we're coming in with 15 seconds left in the second quarter uh, as we head into our halftime here soon. Uh, we'll see if um, Indy Red can get one in right before the half. Our rules stay the same for the end of this quarter. The Red do not need to do any more than maintain possession for the next 15 seconds, and they will have the opportunity to march all the way downfield. There's no need to look for big hucks into the wind. Find the throws that are open, find the lanes that appear, and take everything that this will give you, march downfield, you should be able to punch it in here. Yeah, it's a good good opportunity for Indy Red to get their uh, clean offensive hold here, and uh, it'd be nice to give them that little bit of a three-point boost headed into halftime, so um, hoping for the best for them. On the other side, the soul at 15 seconds to uh, sprint downfield and try to force a turnover if they want a look at the end zone themselves. Just touching down inside. Risa very patiently. And there it is, snatched by Aaron, Schro Aaron Schrader. Oh, sorry. That is uh, Naomi Anderson soaring in. Clocks at zero. The Soul capitalizing what they were looking for, but not able to complete it. As the clock has expired, we are going to go into halftime with the Indianapolis Red up 9-7, giving a, a couple goals I think that they wish they'd kept. Yeah, we'll see uh, what both teams can do here and discuss at halftime, um, and we'll uh, look forward to seeing what uh, changes either of them make going into the second half. We'd like to thank one of our local sponsors, NDMI. All right. Uh, we are going to take a quick break here in the action. Indianapolis Red leading the Atlanta Soul 9-7. to I'm Charlie Lowe for Rochelle Frash. We'll be right back.
ships from Mars? No, they're frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at toy, drug, and department stores. We are back in sunny Indianapolis. I'm Charlie Lowe with Rochelle Frash, bringing you a live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League matchup between the Indianapolis Red and the Atlanta Soul. This broadcast is brought to you by the Premier Ultimate League, courtesy of Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate, providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. We are also brought to you by Discraft. The Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in sports. Some of our other sponsors we want to shout out today, Somerset Paving. Thank you to Somerset Paving. Somerset Paving is Detroit's expert in asphalt and concrete paving. Somerset Paving, take the right way to quality. We want to thank you, uh, thank one of our local sponsors, MDMI, Materials Data Management, has the experience and drive necessary to help your organization deploy the best in engineering materials, information management solutions. Check us out on LinkedIn for current job openings and our website, materialsdatamanagement.com, for a list of our services and software. Data importers, exporters, and consulting too. MDMI is here for you. Also want to shout out everyone's Joy Photography. Uh, you see Joe out there on the field taking some awesome pictures for Indy Red this season. Um, he is a dedicated supporter. Um, everyone's Joy Photography. Um, you Indy Sports Team Photographer and Indy Red's official photography company. Doesn't matter if you need sports or fashion. We got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. Thank you to Breakmark. Breakmark is the official apparel sponsor of Indie Red. Go to the breakmark.com official go to breakmark.com for official jersey replicas and team merchandise. And lastly, we have Disc Store. Discstore.com has the guaranteed lowest prices on everything. If you find a cheaper price, they'll beat it by 5%. Go to Discstore.com for the best prices on all of your ultimate needs, including discs, custom jerseys, apparel, and swag. So as we get started here at the beginning of the second half, Indianapolis Red lead the Atlanta Soul 9-7. Tell me some things. Uh, give me two things you like from the red and something that you don't like, Rochelle. Um, so far, I've loved to see uh, the Huck downfield big looks. Uh, haven't necessarily liked it. They haven't all been converted. So looking to see um, Indy Red kind of holster those when needed and also launch those when they can see them. Uh, kind of a little bit of that control over those, especially as we see the wind being a factor here um, in that um, – upfield downwind situation so kind of looking to rein that in um, on both sides of the field anything you don't like from the red today um can't say anything in particular i mean i think uh just kind of uh maintaining this lead i think is their um this is i think maybe their first first lead they've had um yet this season so kind of uh would love to see them just calm down a little bit um run their system and just focus on um, the right throw right look and, and just play the the ultimate that they know how to play and uh, trust themselves and see what they can do with that i agree with you there uh, point differential is something that is going to be important as we go through the season. Uh, Indy Red is not the only team to catch an unfortunate loss at the hands of the DC Shadow, but um, unfortunately not everybody is going to get that opportunity this season. So the Red, I believe, I think need to push the lead back out a little bit more, um, especially as they try to make up ground on division rival, the Minnesota Strike. Every goal is going to matter as we get farther and farther into the season. Going from a four-goal lead back down to a two certainly is a credit to the Atlanta Soul players, to the talent that they've brought with them today. But as a homer, I uh, I want to see the Red expand that lead yes, just a little bit. Absolutely, and we're we're coming up on a. I mean, uh, Indy Red has a game today, as as we can tell, we are here uh, pointing out the obvious there, Rochelle. Um, but they also have a game this coming Saturday, so kind of a, a quick turnaround for the Red. It'll be interesting to see um, how the roster. I know we were suffering from a couple injuries and illnesses this 
this this weekend. Um, so to see how the roster adapts and looks different, they'll be taking on um, Milwaukee Monarchs. Uh, Milwaukee is traveling into Indy and then immediately driving over to Columbus to play Pride. So a bit of a tough doubleheader weekend for them, but I think it um, will be a good, good matchup, good game on both sides. And so um, definitely mark that on your calendar um, to watch that. On the other side of the field, the Atlanta Soul uh, brought a little bit of a tighter roster with them. Things that I've liked so far, the backfield defense. The marks are quick and ferocious getting to their spots and locking up some of those inside lanes. It's pairing well with their downfield defense. The one thing that they're showing that they are content to give up is those deep shots because they feel that they have the athletes and the red aren't quite hit those shots at a high enough percentage that they are just crushing those inside lanes, those uh, in cuts from the red. That pressure has what is what has brought them back into this game. They keep that up. The Red are going to have to get a lot more creative with their approach in the backfield as they look to find new angles to attack. Yeah, another thing I like about Soul's game is they're definitely not afraid to throw their bodies around. We've seen uh, quite a few bids from um, members of the Atlanta Soul um, not afraid to go after the disc and has definitely um, played to their advantage several times. Uh, so looking forward to see how they continue to use that in the second half here. Remembering that our beginning of quarter rules are a little bit funky in the PUL. The Indianapolis Red uh, began the first in the third quarter with a pull, deferring and receiving at the beginnings of the second quarter and fourth quarter as we get started here. Tight handler defense. They've pushed back more to a matchup defense rather than their usual 3-3-1. Kelly Kirker chasing Emma Jones around. All right, Apollo does Naomi Anderson. Disc too far for number 25, Aaron Godding. Haley Bannis picks up. Inside lane to Kelly Kirker. Good angle on her run. And no foul call there on Emily Wyckoff's in cut. Number three all alone, Dan Dana Bedeau downfield is the sole pickup on the far side. Aaron Schrader with the disc. Immediate shot. Linnea Frazier misses the block, but Haley Bannis secures it. And the red starting with a uh, new field position from the goal line, looking to attack left to right. Kelly Kirker on the sideline, keeping it there up to Linnea Frazier. Evaluates her options. Doesn't like Wyckoff in the middle of the field. Swings over to Anna McClurkin. Good run from the sole defender, Aaron, from the sole defender. Swings it back over to Haley Bannis. Emily Wyckoff in the middle of the field. Takes her time. Looks for Anna McClurkin in the backfield. The Red are starting to open up space between themselves and those backfield defenders. Content to run those defenders all around the field if they're going to yield the side to side space. The Red are content to throw a thousand throws on their way there. Timeout taken by the Indianapolis Red. Likely to see a substitution here to an O-line. Yeah, and one thing we do want to take some time to talk about here today, um, Indy Red does stand with the LGBTQ plus community and supports the right of all people to live authentically for who they are. Uh, recently in Indiana, legislative bills have been passed and signed that ban gender affirming care for transgender youth. Uh, also ban a mention of gender and sexuality in K through three classrooms. Um, it also requires schools to out a child to a parent if they request a name or pronoun change and allow for the banning of a wide variety of books within school libraries. Uh, these bills will go into effect on July 1st. So in order to support um, LGBTQ plus youth and people in Indiana, you can purchase our Pride merch online um, at the Breakmark store. And a portion of those proceeds go to Benefit Gender Nexus, a um, awesome and great organization out of Indianapolis that uh, really strives to support and help the LGBTQ plus community. Um, you can also consider donating to any of your local, local LGBTQ plus uh, groups in your community as well. Um, all striving for the same goal here to uh, just support the rights of all people. And so consider uh, a donation today.
Starting play back up out of the timeout. Alex Hu on the disc. 3-3-1 with the spearhead. As the defense, Sydney Olin launches to Gibbs. Disc floats. And that is a veteran box out to an easy throw to Eliza Hutchings. That's how you make an adjustment out of a timeout. And that's the kind of experience a veteran like Gibbs brings to the table for your Indy Red. Yeah, it was nice to see that immediate conversion quickly out of the timeout here. Uh, it's definitely what you want and uh, the intention when you go in for a timeout. We'll check out the replay here. Uh, Gibbs really boxing out to grab that disc and easy um, throw off to Eliza Hutchings for the goal. Those leading throws can be a touch complex. It's a good opportunity to stop and put away the nerves from a huge sky and box out from Gibbs and just calmly deliver that throw upfield to Eliza Hutchings. That point, two minutes, four seconds in length. Pretty quick after the timeout though from the red. Yeah, those long points of the turnovers, especially here, um, you can see uh, the wind is definitely out to play. And so uh, being able to capitalize on that um, a nice grab from Gibbs to convert into a score to make uh, the score 10-7 Indy Red. Jerseys are rippling on the field, and we've even seen an adjustment in Polar as Anna McClurkin rips a huge I.O. And Annie Mylink not quite able to get to a spot to leave her feet for the block there, content to put on a huge mark and generate some early pressure. The Red are trying to trap on that bottom of the field side. Big push up field from the sole. Disc is just a little bit low out of the hands of Emma Jones, skidding underneath the bidding sole player number 31, Maria Vargas, as the Red look to counterattack. We saw uh, Coach Blake Vanderbush pointing to a wide open Bree Burris, not recognized in time for the Red to make an attack there. Mary Timmons in the middle of the field, back over to Haley Bannis. Two players who compete against each other every year with, uh, with Cincinnati Steamboat and uh, Ann Arbor Hybrid. Throw goes up, Linnea Frazier reading it. Let's Annie Myling secure the disc on the far side. Up to Haley Bannis. Hearing the calls for Haley work on the field. Evaluates her options. Red are gonna need a reset. And they find it via a goal to Bree Burris. Huge around backhand from Haley Bannis. The Red quickly extend their lead back to 11-7. Yes, that was a nice a nice throw there from Haley Bannis. A, uh, definitely the right look. Uh, got three, that opportunity to get that score. Um, wide open nearly always. Something that we're seeing, it's often a product of field size, though this field is not any wider than a, uh, any wider than a standard USAU field. We're seeing more flat marks rather than your traditional forcing, you know, right-handed flip or forcing right-handed backhand. Um, what that does is it stops big downfield throws. It's easier to get in front of those, uh, as we saw earlier in the game on the big hand lock from Kelly Kirker. However, it does mean that a experienced thrower like Haley Bannis doesn't need to do much more than shift from side to side until she gets a look that she likes, and then it's just a big old step around to Bree Burris for that throw. Yeah, nice, nice work of that throw there. Yeah, good adjustments from Red to uh, capitalize on that one. Haley Bannis notching at least her third assist of the day, tied with uh, Gibbs for uh, highest assist total on the team. And we are up to number 18, Naomi Anderson, evaluating her options. Doesn't like Aaron Schrader up the line. Kelly Kirk creating pressure on Mia Greiner. The Sola really good at pushing. Oh, Aaron Schrader just too far. Lies on the ground for a second of disappointment. Red pickup, Annie Mylink looking to start another red counterattack. I really like that look. Schrader's been one of the most effective players all day. I think that you have to take that shot at this point. Oh, absolutely. It's The likelihood of it being successful has, has been proven to be pretty high, so definitely support that one. Huge turn upfield for the red. Annie Mylink fakes the big deep throw, pushes up to number 30, Emily Werewine. Starting her own attack in the red backfield. Evaluates some options. 
Pushes up to Anna McClurkin. Huge rip. And the disc too high and too far out of bounds for Kelly Kerger, who had time to stop and adjust, I think, three different points to see if she could secure that grab. Throw just sailed over her head. And she's going to create some pressure on Aaron, uh, Aaron Schrader as we start this uh, new possession for the soul. So always the toughest. And that is a second in massive hand block from Kelly Kirker, and you saw Schrader just stand there and shake her head. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get a get a replay on that one. We're gonna maybe Kelly's interesting. Uh, we'll have to see which hand that has been for Kelly. I'm not not quite sure which injury, which hand was injured. So we'll see. Oh, so we saw the hand block there, and then we saw the red almost bafflingly turn the disc over. We heard a pit call, we heard a stoppage, and uh, Anna McClurkin just threw the disc out of bounds. We'll go for a third. Ooh, we're getting a little jumpy out there. Starting to see if we can uh, take a breath here and capitalize. Wear one, wear one back over to McClurkin. Fakes that off, goes inside to Kelly Kirker. Big old flick. Dad backhand, just too far for Kelly Kirker. One of the most underappreciated those in Ultimate Frisbee, the dad backhand. There's the rip from Aaron Trader. Gets it off the way that she wants. Streaking downfield is Natalie Willie Wilson. Disc just too far. And I think that the Soul are starting to feel the pressure of time. That's three in a row. Pick up on the sideline, fake or throw rips from Aaron Trader. And with just under six minutes left in the third quarter, I don't know that they quite need those looks yet. No, I definitely think that there's a, a little bit of an air of, of just jumpiness uh, out there right now. Um, definitely seeing some, some scatterbrain movement from both teams. Um, not quite at the point in the game where we need to, 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 make, to make those looks a little less calculated. So uh, opportunity here for both teams to kind of uh, take a breath, dial it back in. Um, potentially might see a timeout here uh, from either coach, but quite the turns we have at this point. This point, beginning to encroach on the three and creeping up to four minute mark. Huck and stuff, while a viable strategy in Ultimate Frisbee, perhaps underappreciated, is one of the more infuriating games to play in and play against. The wind, you can tell, is starting to have not just a physical effect on the game, but a mental effect as well as teams adjust their strategies. and. It is a credit to the Red for running the score back up a little bit that the Soul feel the pressure to put the disc in the end zone a little bit quicker than they were. Have another stoppage on the field, a pick call. Stall count should be rising, doing no small part to the mark from Linnea Frazier. We can definitely see a lot of those um, out of frame. We can see here a lot of, of those deep cuts developing downfield, um, but it doesn't look like that Soul is wanting those right now, so maybe listening a little bit to their um, intuition. Disc across the field into the middle. Little uh, contact on the run through from Emily Warewine on number 25, Aaron Godding. Leads to a stoppage. They're going to figure out what the, what the disc is coming in on, and we're going to restart play. Godding immediately looking to the handler. Just too far. Kelly Kirker streaking downfield, but no one over there to pick up. There's the rip. Kelly starts and stops. Catches the disc, but it... The observer, Luke Johnson, called her inbounds, so the red maintained possession. Looks off Wyckoff. Content to lose a few yards on the way back to Bolte, who throws it straight away into a waiting Naomi Anderson. Disc don't lie, as it were. Huge huck goes up. Tuna not able to secure the disc on a bid. Again, we started this point at 8.15, 8.45, so we're... Uh, we're definitely in a marathon right now. So this is, these are, points like these are where um, you definitely see the true test of an athlete's endurance and strength. And 
Um, a lot of off-season conditioning comes into these moments right here to be able to play offense, play defense, play offense, play defense, and uh, be able to grind on both sides. And that's uh, that's where a lot of strategy comes in here is being able to to do that on both sides of the disc. And Aaron Trader cross field. One more throw secured by Mia Griner. The soul put this Griner. point to rest. Brings our score to 11-8 in favor of the Indianapolis Red. Yeah, it's got to be satisfying for Soul there to kind of be able to wrap that. We can tell visibly some winded players, but they'll just need a second to. As, as we see Aaron Schrader push the disc over, one more throw gets it to Griner in the middle. <laughs> And if you are enjoying today's production of the Premier Ultimate League, this matchup between the Indianapolis Red and the Atlanta Soul, uh, we are proud to present this to you free, but that does not mean that there is no small amount of work that goes into this. If you are enjoying what you are hearing and seeing, please consider donating to the Indianapolis Red. Your dollars go to supporting these hardworking players, uh, providing field space, making uniforms more affordable, getting team discs and everything in between. Whether you can give one, five, ten, a hundred, it does not matter. Every little bit it counts in supporting these professional women and non-binary athletes as they pursue Frisbee at the highest level. Disc sails out of bounds. You're gonna see Lauren Kitten come pick the disc up. And this should be a well-rested O-line for the Indianapolis Red. Switching to the vertical stack instead of their usual horizontal stack. The red looking to get some new views. Rip goes up to Emily Schloniger out of Fort Wayne truck. Skies the defender, pushes upfield. Eliza Hutchings, that is a two throw goal. Yeah, that was, the, they, that was a run the offense point right there. Those rested legs just really paid off for Indy Red. Um, Lauren picks up, evaluates. Big lefty backhand rip to Emily Schloniger. Skies the Atlanta sole defender into Eliza Hutchings. Eliza is one of my favorite athletes on this team as she is always there following the action. It sets her up for plays like that. And I love the connection between Lauren Kitten and Emily Schloniger. Rivals during the club season on their respective teams, Indianapolis Bandwagon and Fort Wayne Truck. Iron sharpens iron and that gives us huge plays like that between the two of them. Yeah, I'll be curious to see if uh, Sol adjusts it all to uh, marking Lauren Kitten. She is clearly proven to be ripping off those hucks. So uh, interesting to see if they will adapt or change to shut her down or maybe just look to um, shut the downfield looks off as well. 12-8 to the Indianapolis Red, lead over the Atlanta Soul. Indianapolis Red playing in their red darks, Soul playing in their lights, enjoying the uh, rebranded jerseys that they partnered with, uh, that they worked on this year. So they pick up. Immediate tough pressure from the Red. Shifting, we hear the fire call as the Red break out of their zone. Soul immediately capitalizing though on the confusion, pushing up field, gaining huge yards on two throws. Under two minutes, that's number 10 with the disc in hands, Mia Griner, pressured by Risa Umeno. Able to force it to Emily Schloniger in the middle of the field, but we do have a call on the field, foul on the call. As Risa Umeno takes a disc to the back of the head. That's why that head's call is so important. Some nice uh, fan participation on that one. A little bit of conversation. Looks like the players can't agree on to what extent there was contact and how it affected. Disc is going to go back to Mia Griner, though. Conversations about where the stall is going to come in. Lord and Kitten down on number 25, Aaron Godding. Putting in some tight mark pressure. Risa chasing cross field. And despite the efforts from Mia Griner and from number three, Dana Bedeau, no one's able to secure the disc for the soul and the red are right back to attacking. This is the same O-line almost to the player that the red had on the field last time. 
benefit of a two two throw goal is that the line stays fresh. Schlonegger pushes up to Katie Dyer Cox. And we are starting to see an adjustment in how they are marking Lauren Kitten. They shift over to take away that lefty backhand. Throw goes up to Eliza Hutchings. And that is a goal. Frustrated Christina Tuna Marciano. Looked a little bit like she was upset at the route running from uh, the two red players, but able to secure that. Yeah, that's always a unfortunate timing of of things as we, we see here. The convenient Mahal. placement of Kobe. other players Happy in the field having to adjust um, in defensive marking and um, definitely maybe maybe would have had a play on you that disc had the red player, player not been there. But uh, again, that is part of the game and uh, part of pivoting quickly and adjusting uh, in order to make the play. Um, but regardless, Indy Red comes down with that and we're at 13 eight and we're sub one minute with 55 seconds left Jaylen, in the third quarter. Graduation. Katie Dyer Cox notching her first assist of the day on that throw to Eliza Hutchings. Pull goes up from Anna McClurkin keeping the disc in her hands for those nice IO angles. Disc stays inbounds on the far side of the field. Fumbled for a second by the sole as they start their attack moving from left to right. Quick, making quick work of the spacing between the red defenders, staying in the middle of the field. Layout from Emma Jones to maintain possession, right back to the middle. Lindsay Allman pressured by Bree Burris to try to create some space. Disc moves it up for the soul. And despite the incredible effort from number three, Mary Atlanta Timmons, for Danny, Cordes. Danny Cordes secures the goal for the Atlanta soul, pushing the score right back up to 13-9. That's good movement there from Atlanta Soul. Uh, we'll check back here on the replay. Able to get it in just on that line there. Um, nice footwork from Soul. Yeah, Anna McClurkin just gets beat, uh, beat over to that space, allowing for an easy up the line throw. And then as she's catching up to get a mark on the sole player, just wastes no time, puts the throw up to Danny Cordes, who secures the goal. That is one of the things I'm, we're seeing some. The sole are quicker into their upfield advancement. The red are taking their time and churning through handler cuts, in cuts, deep cuts. It's a lot more patient. The sole are exploiting those momentary lapses in the red defense, whether it's transitions from zone to person or vice versa. When you see this old push on their most, at their most effective, they are connecting three, four throws all in those upfield lanes and eating up 40, 50 yards of field space before the red defenders have a chance to make any adjustments. 10 seconds left. Huck goes up from Sydney Oland to number 23, Melissa Gibbs. Once again, easy adjustment. And uh, Maya Hernandez jukes her defender out. Maya, your mom is proud of you as you bring in another goal. Red push the lead back to five. It was a nice way to wrap the third quarter for Indy Red. A smooth offense there, uh, making it look easy. I love the way as we get the replay up, Gibbs fakes the first look, throws, and the hesitation step from Maya Hernandez coupled with the easy floating throw from Gibbs allows time for the, uh, for the goal to be secured. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break here. Charlie Lowe for herself, Rash, here on the, on the cast for the Indy Red.
What are they? Spaceships from Mars? No, they're frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at toy, drug, and department stores. All right, welcome back to the start of the fourth quarter. Again, this live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. The Indianapolis Red would also like to thank Ben Davis High School for hosting this game and our June game. Uh, the next game the Red play on the 13th will be at Brebuff Ultimate uh, at Brebuff High School, home of the uh, second place state finishing Brebuff Ultimate team. Um, Want to shout out Ben Davis? Uh, their men's high school basketball team this year went undefeated on their way to a state championship. Uh, go Giants! Indeed, as the poll goes up from the Atlanta Soul. Indianapolis receiving. So as we get this quarter started, Rochelle, with a five-point goal, we have to start thinking about point differential and what the implications that has for the rest of the season are. If the Red can run the score up a little bit as <laughs> Skittles brings in another goal uh, over a bidding Aaron Schrader, stops and acknowledges the play made there. The Red have two large deficits that they're looking to erase on the season. A, as we see, Katie Dyer-Cox push up the field to Eliza Hutchings. The throw trails in a little bit, a little bit of contact between the two players. Glad that Aaron Schrader is okay. Um, you know, if the Red can erase the six deficit, you know, goal deficit to Minnesota via this game and potentially push higher, that has long season implications for them. Correct. Um, Point differential is one of the things that goes into measuring out any potential tiebreakers that teams might have in the win-loss column. And Red have a really good opportunity here today to take make one of those other things a non-factor. Yeah, there's definitely uh, playoff implications for Red I mean, in every single game that they play. But you're right, Charlie, that is um, a factor here. So I think uh, Red just has to focus on running their smooth offense. And I think that has proven to be where they are converting most. Um, not necessarily taking those risky huck looks, but just uh, playing like they know how and I think uh, that'll be a simple way for them to just keep racking up some points and uh, help even out that point if headed into the rest of the season. Atlanta Soul take over just shy of midfield. Tight pressure on the backfield from Haley Banis and Anna McClurkin. Disc is advanced up the field to Maria Vargas. Emily Wyckoff frustrating some of those upfield looks. Disc is bobbled out of the hands of number 21, Sam Lee. Wyckoff streaks downfield. Throw goes up from Haley Banis. Wyckoff's going to have to come back for it. Not able to sky Maria Vargas, who is going to pick up at the goal line for the Atlanta Soul. Yeah, it's one of those throws where it was, it was definitely the, the right look, but it was about one, one or two seconds too late and uh, able for the Soul player to make a play on that disc. Sam Lee just between two players. Soul not able to maintain possession. Anna McClurkin picking up. Advances up to Annie Mylink. M shifts her mark around to get some looks that she wants. Unfortunately, no players in the area. Over to Haley Bannis. Throw is too high. Mylink not able to get there before Emma Jones does. Oh, I'm sorry, Danny Cordez, who knocks the disc down. Picks up. Centers over to... Sam Lee pushes upfield to Emma Jones. And the Solar right back in business. Tight handler defense. In cut comes in, though. This goes up. Bolte not able to find it. We'll see if she drops to assist anybody. No red players all in the vicinity of their marks. Anna McClurkin putting a mark onto Emma Jones. Emily Wyckoff. Easy throw goes up line. Emma Jones locks the goal in for the soul. She's getting hyped. She's getting excited. Yeah, it was a nice, nice point there from Atlanta Soul. I um, think they need to, as this lead in, uh, increases a little bit for Red, I think Soul is still needs to focus on um, running their system and playing well. I mean, they um, just need to take a breath and calm down. I mean, they 
they have the right looks and are making the right decisions, but it would just feel a little bit hurried probably by the pressure of the time clock. And so um, definitely seeing some mistakes that were not necessarily we were seeing at the beginning of the game, but um, just taking into account where we are and uh, what is to come. And it went down to good old-fashioned cutting mechanics there. Danny Cordes was able to get Emily Wyckoff onto her heels, uh, jabbing directly at her and then pushing downfield. Uh, tough for Emily to recover there and to get back and set a good mark. Um, Cordes just took a great opportunity to deliver a nice throw there and uh, resulting in that sole goal. We'll see how the Red respond with their offensive line back on the field. Score differential still at five. Indianapolis Red up 15-10, about 9.45 left in the game. This is a good opportunity for us to acknowledge some of the differences that happen in uh, quarters and how they operate. The clock will continue to push all quarter until the last two minutes. Once we get inside of the last two minutes, any stoppages result in the stoppage of the clock. Maya Hernandez advancing the disc to Eliza Hutchings. And I don't think that I can say enough positive things today about wow. Melissa Gibbs and all of them manifest in how she is able to manipulate her body in the field the ways that only a veteran can. Recognize that the throw is going to come in just a little bit and around the pressure from her defender as this throw goes up. Absolutely. It's great to have her back this year and uh, just kind of that bringing – Bringing that vet confidence is always helpful to a team, especially um, if there are rookies or new players, um, kind of a glue that helps hold that together. And um, you can see her confidence on field and the result of her stat line today. Um, great to have her back out there with us. Melissa Gibbs, who had taken brief pauses from different areas of her Frisbee career to enjoy one of those greatest of all adventures, uh, being a mom. It's nice to see her uh, getting back out to bring some of that leadership to this red team. It's definitely showing on the stat sheet today. Red back into that 3-3-1 zone. Huge cup forces a soaring throw across the field, but secured by the sole before the red can get more pressure on it. Inside to Emma Jones. Little fakes just to try to move the cup a little bit. Red quick to those spots this time. Bree Burris and Jalen Baumgartner in that cup, and Wyckoff just sneaks her hand into the cookie jar. McClurkin rips downfield. Emily... Position 22 on 22 and not able to come down with the disc there. Phenomenal pressure from Danny Cordez. I like fast break offense. The Red had a great opportunity there though to just patiently push the disc up the field as the throws were coming. Yeah, I think it's it's important here too as, as Red is looking to kind of get some of those points making up for other games that they too also um, take a breath and slow a bit when they do get those break opportunities. Um, kind of rein it back in and cue in that excitement a little bit less. McClurkin almost gets that back, tips the disc, but still secured by the sole as they look to begin pushing up field. Quick upline throw over to number eight, Danny Ortiz. Emma Jones lays out slow to get up. Takes the injury call. Injury on the field. Going to summon number 18, Naomi Anderson. We hope that Emma Jones is okay. I have to imagine that she might have gotten the wind knocked out of her a little bit. That uh, was some tough contact with the ground. We hope to see her back out again shortly as the Soul restart their attack with Naomi Anderson on the disc. Pops it over to Sam Lee. Back down to Maria Vargas. And we are seeing them content to dink and dunk through this red wall. Audience getting some vigorous hammer calls up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we've had, if we've seen a hammer or a scuba from either team today. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if we get some uh, some crowd reactions out here. Disc too far for Naomi Anderson. And what an opportunity for the Red to punch in a quick goal on the goal line. 
Anna McClurkin picks up. Does not find Haley Bandis fast enough. And the disc is behind Jalen Baumgartner into the hands of Sam Lee. The Red are going to want that one back. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bree Burris gets a hand on it, still secured by the sole. Disc back in the middle of the field, Maria Vargas. You can tell that the tension is ratcheted up between these two teams. There's a little bit less free-flowing. Everything at this point in the game is contested. All these throws, all these catches are coming in much tighter windows. Far wide mark from Jalen Baumgartner forces a loss about five yards. Bobble, but Vargas secures the disc. Bree Burris is so close on these throws. It's definitely one thing that she is very good at. We'll see if she can get one today. Maybe a little bit, a bit of an intimidy right there. Danny Cordes just not able to secure the grab. Drops the disc and can't get it on the second attempt bid. Jalen Baumgartner keeps the disc alive, it looks like. Some conversation going on between her and Danny Ortiz. Huge pressure on the bid from Ortiz. Baumgartner saying that she got her hand underneath it, but it looks like after some conversation, the disc was ruled down between the players. Yes, and we do see that bottom edge of the disc touch the ground before Jalen can get her hands underneath it. Like that she was willing to fight for what she believed in, though, in a well-reasoned call between the two players. A little bit of tubing going on with the sole. Drop it back to Naomi Anderson. Swing is over to Vargas. Pushes the rest of the way across field to number eight, Danny Ortiz. Up to Sam Lee. Back to that inside space for the soul. Linnea Frazier, tight handler defense. Has to shoot a tighter lane over to Anderson. Back to Vargas. And what an incredible grab. Naomi Anderson digs out like a pro volleyball player to save that disc. Keeps the soul possession alive. Inside backhand look does not go off from Therese Dobler. Travel. Travel. Some conversation about a travel call from the red. We're going to get another chance uh, to see that layout grab. The disc keeps its edge there, really forcing Anderson to get far and get underneath it. About 10 yards outside of the end zone. Sam Lee digs it out. A lot of athletic plays for the soul on this point. Not in for number 27, Dobler. Looking for an option, goes cross field high and wide. And it's going to just be too far for Anderson. That might have been that opportunity for that hammer that we were looking for, that the, that the crowd was looking for down there. So... We'll uh, see what happens now. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll trust the crowd on this one next time. Coach Blake Vanderbush signaling for a timeout call for the red. Players not quite certain of what's going on. And the red do get their timeout call after uh -oh. all. Yeah, that's why I always like uh, being out at games like this. I think one of my favorite parts about uh, the professional ultimate community is just how everyone comes from different backgrounds. I mean, even um, just from multi-states on Indy Red and different teams and just bringing that breadth of experience together. Um, it's also fun just being able to have a home game. I mean, we have representatives uh, just out here from lots of different mixed teams. There's high school teams. Um, open women's teams, uh, quite a few uh, members of the Indianapolis Alley Cats out here supporting their fellow professional athletes as well. Um, just a great opportunity and a beautiful day of Ultimate has turned into. Uh, so just very thankful to all the fans for coming out to support. Um, we do have a home game again um, on Saturday, May 13th, this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. at Burbuff High School. Um, you can buy tickets on uh, Indy Red's website, uh, follow Indy Red on social, uh, get in on all the action, um, and we appreciate your support, and I'm excited to see uh, the duration of this game and how it plays out. 
this substitution for both teams could not come at a better time. That last, this point having gone on for over five minutes now, fresh legs, regardless of offense or defense, is going to be the difference maker here. Seems like we've had quite a few of these long points, almost almost at this exact chunk of the quarter, um, kind of that eight minute down to the four, three minute range. Hand um, block, stuffs the red. And five yards out, the Solar are going to get an opportunity as Schrader walks to pick the disc up. Marked by Maya Hernandez. Inside look frustrated by the mark, but pushes right back over to number six, Natalie Willie Wilson. And it does not matter whether you are on offense or defense. That was, in fact, a D point, I believe, for the Indy Red, but it never feels good to not get the goal on a long point. Yeah, absolutely. There's it's one of those disheartening things about playing ultimate is when you grind out there for a while and don't end up walking away with the point. Uh, lucky for Red in this case, they are up quite a few, so not too much skin off their back, but um, ready to see them come back out here, get their O-line out, um, and hopefully add another one to their account as well. O-line going back out for Indy Red. We see a lot of the usual suspects. Risa Umeno, Skittles Milton, Katie Dyer-Cox, Melissa Gibbs, uh, Alex Hu, and Sydney Oland coming over from that last offensive substitution. On the Atlanta Soul side, we see Aaron Schrader. We see Emma Jones. We see uh, Sam Lee. A lot of these players who have really started to show their impact at the end of the game for them, perhaps writing more of a hot hand strategy. As the pull goes up. Indy Red attacking from the close sideline. Sydney Oland doesn't like the look to initially to Alex who pushes her up line. Skittles rocketing downfield throw maybe comes a little late. In fact, it does. Skittles <laughs> sort of essentially blocking her the throw to her in order to prevent a faster counterattack. Tight mark forces over to Schrader. Rockets a backhand down the line. We see Gibbs. Closing some of the distance, not in. Love the second effort bid, but Disc was caught about two yards outside of the end zone. Tight defense from Hutchings, just barely over her hand. The soul complete the break opportunity, and the couple of the red players left wondering what exactly happened there. Yeah, there's one of those fast moments where things kind of fall apart quickly. And And Emily Schloniger, a strong and fast line with a couple throwers capable of putting the disc where they want to. We'll see what the strategy looks like for the red in their usual hoe stack. Maya Hernandez comes way over on the far side, but the disc goes deep to Schloniger. It is too far. About seven yards past the intended receiver. And we see Schrader go to pick the disc up, marked by Schloniger. Who, Schrader looking for her team to get closer, going... Uh, from left to right. Throw is up. Saved by number 13, Emma Jones. Marked by Risa Umeno. Schloniger with tight defense on Schrader. They really don't want the disc into her hands. Pushing it to Cordez over to, back to Schrader. Bid from Arisa Umeno. 
undercuts her receiver, gets that hand on it, and the Red have another opportunity to save this hold. Nice to see a, a bid out there for a defensive play from Indy Red. Haven't seen too many of those this season, but uh, we know they got them. They got them in them. So glad to see that come out. Risa Umeno spent last season playing with the Columbus Pride, bringing her talents over to us here at Indy Red. We could not be happier to have a player of her caliber. She's played a lot of places, including with Chicago Nemesis in the club scene. It's nice to have a veteran presence here. Disc is pushed to Maya Hernandez. Nice upline throw. To Schlonegger, another huge bit from the Red. That's one on defense, that's one on offense as the Red secure the goal, 17-12. Very satisfying grab from Emily Schlonegger. Uh, it's always nice to come down with that one. It's sometimes there's nothing more debilitating than laying out and hitting the ground and not coming up with a disc. So always a good feeling. So we see Umeno orbit around her defender and get that left hand as she leaves her feet securing that block and most importantly knocking it away from her defender who can't come back and complete a grab anyway that leads the offense to an easy dig from Emily Schlonegger to secure this goal as we see it one more time she runs she reaccelerates and easy bit lands nice easy on her uh, abdomen and brings that goal in Emily Schlonegger has to be one of the most satisfying players to coach if you're this Indy Red coaching staff. Somebody who is very content to uh, throw her body around and do the dirty work that a lot of other players don't like to do. To her, it's all about bringing home Ws, and that's the most admirable thing you can look for in a player. Yeah, and Emily Schlonegger has definitely been around the block in her um, ultimate playing career and uh, brings a lot of experience just from... Uh, mixed and um, women's environments and collegiate and professional as well. Uh, a great teammate and a uh, great resource and nice to nice to see her getting some stats out there for herself today. Pull not quite to half field. Trader picks up quick around fake. Secured just outside of the end zone by Anderson. Mark on from Baumgartner. Pushes it inside to Atlanta Willie Wilson and, Atlanta Wilson and right back are the Atlanta Soul, wasting no time as they uh, feel the pressure of a minute 14 left. Remember that inside of two minutes, any stoppage is a clock stoppage. So if play is not smooth and consistent, there's more opportunities for teams to take advantage of a slower moving clock. Indy Red trotting out an O-line. Soul making some last minute calibrations to the D line, looking to eat in as deep into this four goal deficit as they can. Coach out there wearing the Atlanta Soul flag as a uh, blanket, perhaps providing him a little extra warmth on an otherwise warm day. I see Schrader, I see Danny Cordez, I see Natalie Willie Wilson, a lot of the athletic, fast, big throwing players on the field for the Soul. Sam Lee out there to steady the ship at Handler. They're going to need a quick break. They're going to need a quick block. And you have to think that the clock is the biggest factor. Yeah, just 114 left here in the game. Let's see if Atlanta can get in a couple more. Make this um, score a little bit closer. Lauren Kitten picking up. Red back in their vertical stack. Doesn't like the look to Milton. Likes the huck to Katie Dyer-Cox, who brings it in over and around the bidding sole defender. I don't even know if I have words for what I just saw. Somehow, uh, Katie Dyer-Cox always makes everything look so easy. Uh, a great teammate, also a very experienced veteran player. I mean, she the stuff she comes down with, you can tell she's 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 got that confidence in her. And she
had what six how many goals in a minute six seconds six seconds six seconds but seems fairly unlikely given the circumstances yeah I, i've never been known for my good math skills as, <laughs> as anyone who knows me knows i cannot do basic math i will call myself out on that one mary timmons on the mark red back in their 331 arrowhead zone swing is back to number 25 aaron godding back to naomi anderson has Sam Lee on the far side, but they don't want to get trapped over there as of right now. Low throw, dug out by Godding. Pushes to Schrader. They want the disc in the hand of their best thrower. Godding on that low sideline. Big around throw is not dug out by Anderson. Red not taking off this time. Finally shifting into more of a clock management scenario. Werewine contends to eat a little bit more. Does not advance to Bolte, instead drops back to Bannis. Pushes upfield to Kelly Kirker. Some of the best hands on the team. Throws it over to Bolte Baxter. Looks off Bannis to Werewine in the middle of the field. Waits for the wind to decide what it's going to do with the disc. Little bump and grind on the mark. Foul called. Less than 10 left. We're going to get a stoppage. Three seconds is more than enough time for the soul to do something with it. Time out called by the Atlanta soul. Going to look at getting a line out there to make the best they can of these last three seconds of game clock. Yeah, it might as, I mean, you, you give, you're giving the timeouts. You might as well take them, right? See what they can do here with the last... Maybe we'll see. Uh, maybe they're discussing a, a, a hammer look as the, the crowd so anxiously wants to see in this game. Give the people what they want is exactly. what I believe to my core. The crowd's been asking for hammers all day. If you're going to uncork one, might as well be in the last three seconds of this game. Got nothing to lose at this point. Let's see it. Red defensive line out there. Skittles, Milton, Emily Wyckoff, Katie Dyer-Cox, Eliza Hutchings, Kristen Bolte-Baxter, Melissa Gibbs, Maya Hernandez. As the uh, red tent takes a tumble, hopefully everyone's safe there and no one was uh, underneath that as it began to blow away. This is, a, this is an athletic, this is an anti-Hail Mary line for the red to try to put this game away. Anderson with the disc. If she's not ripping it herself, it'll be a quick look to Tuna, to, uh, Tuna or to Schrader to try to get one more throw off. Katie Dyer-Cox on the mark. Throw goes up. Gibbs gets one more block to end the game. Notches another completion up to Eliza Hutchings. And that is your first W on the season for the Indianapolis Red, who take it 18-13 over the Atlanta Soul. That concludes our game. Soul 13 Rochelle, I like that win. 18. Top to bottom felt like a very complete team win. Contributions came at every level. When the Soul went on a little this run of their own, the taking the score from everyone. four to two, the Red did not get flustered. They stayed true to their game plan, trusted in their throwers, their athletes, and their depth to make plays, and are able to secure a much needed five goal win. Absolutely, I think this was this much needed and much desired from Red today. I mean, they strategically planned coming into this game uh, with a bit of a different roster than they normally have, but uh, they were able to be patient and work across the game um, and just be confident and play confident out there and uh, rein it in when they needed to rein it in. And that's evidenced by their win here, uh, which is much needed going into um, the rest of the season and into their game Saturday. A good, a good confidence boost to, to really give them uh, that whiff they need um, as uh, the season progresses. I do want to shout out the Atlanta Soul. Once again, thank you for making the trip up here. Uh, I really liked what I saw from that team today. Missing a uh, few big contributors, still able to field a competitive team, force a competitive game and they are going to be dangerous as we approach, uh, as we dig further into this PUL season. Most definitely. All right, thank you all again for watching this presentation of the Premier Ultimate League matchup of the Atlanta Soul at the Indianapolis Red, who secured the victory 18-13. For Rochelle Frash, I am Charlie Lowe. 
We'll see you next week.